Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Land, and today Marvel released the first official trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. As you know me, I watch trailers and movies at pointy febic speed and try to find hidden details and Easter eggs. So this is a complete breakdown of the Guardians 3 trailer, where I managed to find some incredible hidden details and Easter eggs. But first, please spare me just 51 seconds to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Get your jingle bells ready for the holidays. If you want to pick up some essentials, the waterproof lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and the waterproof weed whack ear and nose hair trimmer featuring skin safe technology to protect your jingle bells are the perfect place to start. There's also a 400k LED light on it, so you can light up your path like Rudolph. And now that you've groomed your candy cane, make sure you don't smell like a reindeer by grabbing the Curb Preserver Ball Deodorant and Curb Reviver Ball Toner. The sulfate free and vegan products will keep you smelling fresh down there. Once they touch your sack, they will never go back. Manscaped makes the best stocking stuffer for those on the nice list. Santa cares about his sack, so should you. At least try and look nice even if you're naughty by going to manscaped.com and use my code LAD20 for free shipping and 20% off. We were gone for quite a while. But no matter what happens next, the galaxy still needs its guardians. Hello! We come in peace. So it begins with the Marvel logo slowly transforming into a cassette tape that we've seen way back in Guardians 1. So Marvel still keeps up their long tradition where their intro transforms into the story that's about to unfold. Then we see the Guardians donning their brand new comic accurate suits. Now of course they're no strangers to uniforms. In Guardians 1, they had a wardrobe change in the middle of the movie. And now the team has evolved to its own brand. Which also means how much more seriously they have taken their job. They will be more unified in this film than ever ever before. And they now have a brand new ship as well, which is called the Bowie. Now the location the Guardians visit does look like Earth, but this could be an alternate version, which is inhabited by animal and humanoid hybrids. They dress like humans, but they're not. Notice there's even an island that seems to have something resembling the Statue of Liberty. However, it is likely an animal version of the Lady Liberty. Well, that's why I just love James Gunn. He manages to bring the most weird comic book thing to mainstream cinema and makes it look good. Drax, seriously, dude? No, 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 no! Ow! <laughs> hey! Don't forget where we came from. You notice in this scene where this kid passes the ball to Drax who then smacks it back on her face, Peter were initially smiling because of the friendly gesture. But as soon as Drax throws this kid into another dimension, I love the reaction on Peter's face. And Nebula does react too but she has a very late reaction. You notice Nebula's left hand looks very different in this film. We do get a clearer look at it towards the end where Adam Warlock is beating the shit out of her. Then we see Peter listening to music using headphones. Now this is what I assume is called Zoom that was given to him by Kraglin as a gift from Yondu. It's called a Zune. It's what everybody's listening to on Earth nowadays. It's got 300 songs on it. 300 songs? Then we see a young rocket locked up in a cage without his suit, and a hand from a dark background approaches him. Now my theory is this could be the High Evolutionary. In the comics, he's a scientist that is fond of living experimentation to combine biology and technology. Him being the main villain indicates Rocket Raccoon being a focal point of the movie, as Rocket is a product of the High Evolutionary. Then we see the Guardians jumping into space wearing five different colored suits. Now the internet was quick to assume this might be a reference to the video game Among Us. But James Gunn has quickly debunked it on Twitter. Actually, this could be a reference to Pac-Man's ghosts, but for that we would need a pink colored suit which is missing here. Because if you remember, Pac-Man was a big influence in Peter's life back in Guardians 2. Now the big question here is, where are the Guardians headed? Well, it looks like they're headed to a place where the High Evolutionary lives, or at least his HQ or something. It looks like the whole place is made out of living organisms, which would make sense given what he does for a living. It even has hair embedded on its surface. And just look at the size of it. These are our guardians 
and this is the portal they're entering through. Then we see Gamora looking at a Polaroid, probably given to her by Peter, in order to prove that there used to be another Gamora who loved Peter. Then we see a shot of the Guardians in nowhere, except Gamora, where Nebula is now carrying a senseless body of Peter Quill. Now the reason I know nothing bad happened to Peter is because of the reactions of the rest of the Guardians. Rocket is just casually sipping something, Mantis and Kraglin aren't crying, and there's also Cosmo the Space Dog. Now in this shot, we get a clearer view at Nebula's left hand that I've talked about. It is indeed different from what we've seen previously. In fact, even Mantis has a new left sleeve on her suit, which wasn't there even in the recent Guardians Holiday Special. So there is a pattern here. Almost everyone's left arm looks a bit different than it used to be. Then we get this epic shot where Rocket tells Peter that he's done running. Pete, I'm done running. But notice in the background, we can clearly see Gamora here. So by the time Rocket will say this, she will have already rejoined the team. And of course, we again see Cosmo the space dog in the background. But the rest of the surroundings are all on fire, meaning something or someone has attacked nowhere. And now Rocket is saying he won't run away from this, he will fight this time. Then we see Gamora drawing her signature dagger. Now if you notice the surroundings closely, you will see that it matches with the location of the High Evolutionary. So my theory is this shot is taking place inside the High Evolutionary's HQ. And notice how the makeup on Gamora's face is slightly different than what it used to be. This indicates how this version of Gamora is more aggressive and a little less sophisticated, because this one didn't go through the experiences the other Gamora went through. Then we get a massive callback to Guardians 1, where the team is set for yet another prison break. It looks like this is High Evolutionary's facility, as we see the same patterns here that we've seen in the trailer previously. And the team is wearing matching prison jumpsuits as well. But Drax has taken a pretty big hit, and Gamora is there to help him in a beautiful turn of events from Volume 1. But not only Drax though, it seems Nebula and Peter both have taken some damage too. And Peter is holding onto an object which, uh, let me know what you lads think about this though. Now notice inside this facility, we see other creatures wearing similar suits as the Guardians, with cybernetic bolts in their backs, albeit their suits aren't that colorful. So my theory is, in order to enter into this facility, the Guardians had to wear such suits. But because they're the Guardians, they made this suit look colorful. Now if I just go back to the left hand thing again, notice Mantis's left hand now appears to be normal as she had only put on a different sleeve, but Nebula's left arm seems to have a permanent new look. No matter what attire she is wearing, it's there. Then we see Peter lunging into this white figure, who could be the scientist called Enclave in the comics. They're the ones responsible for creating Adam Warlock in the comics. Notice there are some scientists already dead in the same facility, and all of their heads don't look like a human head at all. They're all cybernetic, meaning this could be taking place in the alternate Earth, which we saw the Guardians visiting in the beginning of the trailer. Then we get a close-up shot of a drop of blood, and Peter screams in agony. Now James Gunn has quite clearly said this will be the last Guardians film, and Dave Bautista said he's pretty much done with this character Drax, so we can expect one or multiple lead characters dying in this film. Now keep in mind, James Gunn has also said it's a story revolving around Rocket, so I wouldn't be surprised if Rocket is the one dying here. But boy, seeing his backstory and his death in the same film will be heartbreaking. Then in the next shot, we see Rocket's love interest, aka Lila, for the first time in the MCU. Till now, only her name appeared in Guardians 1, but now it seems we're gonna get a proper story. But notice Lila has cybernetic paws in this scene, meaning the High Evolutionary has already done some experiments on her. And look at the relief on Rocket's face when he sees Lila here. Might indicate this is them escaping from High Evolutionary's cage. But my theory is, even though they're out of the cage, but Lila somehow gets left behind or gets caught, and only Rocket manages to escape successfully which would explain her absence throughout the MCU, because notice even though Rocket is completely free, but Lila still has a lock on her neck. And if I move forward a couple of frames, notice Rocket has a device on his hand which could be a controller to open the gates of the cages. Drax, Nabil, and Gamora then come face to face with this monster creature that we've seen previously in Guardians Volume 2. And then we see for the first time in the MCU, Adam Warlock played by Will Poulter. And by the time Volume 3 releases next year, it will be six years from the day we've seen Adam Warlock being held in this cradle in Guardians Volume 2. It's a new type of birthing pod, man? That, my child, is the next step in our evolution. More powerful, more beautiful, more capable of destroying the Guardians of the Galaxy. I think I shall call him... Adam.
boy, I cannot wait to see Adam Warlock on the big screen. Now, if you notice the background here, it looks like Adam is in nowhere, which is not good for the Guardians. And rightly so, in the exact next shot, we see Adam throwing a heavy punch on Nebula's face. Now, notice in this shot, Adam's cape is missing. But in this one where he's punching Nebula, his cape is still there. Meaning, Nebula will give him a run for his money, and Adam might lose his cape in the process. Then we see our OG Guardians are doing their famous walk. And this one seems to be the best one in the trilogy. But be assured, this won't be happening towards the climax this time. Because at the end, not everyone's gonna survive. Then we see this classic back-to-back -back shooting by Peter and Groot. And if you notice carefully, we can see the same white coat scientists are dead on the floor. Meaning, just before Peter lunges into this scientist, a massive gunfight will take place over here. And I absolutely love how branches of Groot are maneuvering multiple guns at the same time. Then we see the title card. But just before it appears in English, we see it appearing in the Cree language. And that's it. Overall, this looks like a perfect end to a trilogy. And let's, this is just my opinion, the Guardians trilogy might just be the best one in the entire MCU. Let me know your thoughts on this and your favorite detail from this video. And please let me know if I missed one or two details too. I really appreciate that. My next video is everything everywhere all at once at point two fabric speed. So do send me details for that too if you think you caught one that nobody did yet. Now please give me a thumbs up if you like this video, grab the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then I'll see you lads in the next one.